Welcome to 5-Minute Hacks, the series that shows that knowledge is power. In each episode, we'll explore various ways to learn about hacking and how to use Project Discovery's open source tools, all in quick five-minute segments. Get ready to learn some amazing hacks and have some fun along the way. And remember, there's always more to discover, so join us and let's get hacking. Today, we're going to talk about one of the first and most important phases of any offensive security program or pen testing engagement, reconnaissance. Without a solid plan for reconnaissance that covers as much as possible, any program can be set up for failure before it even starts. If we miss a set of assets in this step, then we may miss critical vulnerabilities that an attacker may be able to exploit, even if our vulnerability scanning and remediation is perfect for the assets we do know about. And a critical part of this phase is subdomain enumeration. Subdomain enumeration is important because it helps security professionals discover potential entry points in an attack surface, aiding in comprehensive penetration testing and fortifying an organization's cybersecurity posture. There are primarily two basic types of subdomain enumeration, brute forcing and passive enumeration. Brute forcing in subdomain enumeration involves attempting to discover subdomains by guessing their names using common subdomain names or dictionary words. This method can be effective, but it's also resource intensive and can potentially be detected and blocked by security measures, such as rate limiting, IP blocking, and other things implemented by the target domain. Tools such as Amass and Alterex employ brute force techniques to enumerate subdomains by checking numerous potential ones. Passive enumeration is a less intrusive method that relies on gathering information from publicly available sources and third-party services without directly interacting with the target domain. Sources for passive enumeration include search engines, public DNS records, SSL certificates, and websites with this type of data. Passive enumeration tools like Passive Total and SubFinder from Project Discovery gather data from these sources to list out subdomains without actively querying the target domain's DNS. Today, let's look at passive subdomain enumeration with SubFinder. Installing SubFinder can be done with one command from GitHub repository here, or PDTM, Project Discovery's tool management system. Once installed, we can use SubFinder right away. Just run SubFinder-D and add a domain name. I can also optionally save those results to a file. We'll see results returned rapidly. This is a key advantage to starting with passive domain enumeration, as it will return quickly as the API calls to the various data sources are happening rather than having to brute force each domain name. But in order to make this type of passive enumeration as effective as possible, you want to include as many data sources as possible. Luckily, SubFinder supports dozens of different data sources. However, for some of these sources, an API key is required in order to access the data. If we list sources with dash ls, we'll see those that have an asterisk next to them. Those require an API key from that source. Once you have the API key, you can add it to your provider config by opening the subfinder slash provider dash config YAML file in your home directory dot config with your favorite text editor. Now, the next time we run subfinder, it will use those additional sources to look for additional subdomain records. If we add a dash V to our run, we can even see which sources each of these subdomains is coming from. And of course, if we have a list of domains that we want to find all the subdomains for, we can pass that instead of a single domain using the dash DL flag. We can also look at all of the options that SubFinder provides by running SubFinder dash H for help. Here we can see, do we want to specify which sources to use or exclude, set any rate limiting, as well as configure different types of output and additional configuration. To learn more, visit nux.gg slash subfinder. In today's video, we talked about how to use subfinder in order to passively enumerate subdomains. You can also use tools like AlterX to use word lists of common words to do more active enumeration and brute force domains. Combining these techniques, as well as using as many sources of data as possible, will ensure that your offensive security program starts on the right foot and has the most accurate picture possible of your attack surface. Remember, knowledge is power, and staying one step ahead is your best line of defense. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay secure, my friends. Thank you for joining us for this 5-Minute Hack. We hope you discovered something new. If you want to stay in touch with Project Discovery, join our Discord server at nux.gg discord. That's nux.gg discord. Until then, happy hacking.